Hey guys, Drac here. Now, we're here for the next review. I'm not going to be talking as much as I did with the previous one, I promise. Uh, that was pretty much just to set up the rules, and so if you guys haven't seen my video uh, review of Overwatch, this is going to be pretty much the same format, where I'm going to do it as a vlog, you're going to get some, uh, you're going to get some footage up here, and uh, we're going to talk about all the good elements as well as the bad, but this time we're going to be talking about another in uh, iteration from Platinum Games, uh, in particular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. And I got a couple of people requesting for a review of this. That's why it actually got into the list is because it actually did look pretty good. It was going to be kind of a, a nostalgia trip back to the 80s and or back to the 90s, back to classic turtles and see whether or not Platinum could pull that off. And believe it or not, hopes were high because they had already done Transformers Devastation uh, the during the holiday season last year. All right, it was 2014 or 2015 where they had Devastation. And Devastation was really good. So uh, I remember talking about this on Geek News where I didn't see how this could fail because they'd already done really, really well with Bayonetta 2 and with Transformers Devastation. They had Scalebound coming out. But I may have spoke too soon. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the story is fairly straightforward. It's, it's pretty much... If you were watching an episode of the series, this would have a similar plot where the turtles are out on their usual patrols and they come across some Foot Clan members that are robbing banks and in turn come across Bebop at, uh, eventually and he actually hints that there's a bigger scheme going on. Big surprise, right? That's usually how these things go. And so the rest of the game is pretty much trying to figure out what this new, this big scheme is. Um, which it actually kind of mirrors the plot of the second movie, trying to bring the Krang here and, uh, and trying to take over the world kind of deal. I'm, I'm not going to worry about spoiling the story because the game's been out for a couple of months now. But yeah, it's pretty much trying to bring the Krang back to Earth. Nothing surprising there. And each mission is just trying to deal with um, all of the Foot Clan members in a, in a set area and then eventually getting to a boss. And that's really kind of the feature of this game is not necessarily the Foot Clan, but it's the bosses because you get to have a nice nostalgia trip while seeing them through Platinum's kind of vision of it. <clears throat> now, like I said, this is kind of an average setup for a TV episode. That's not a bad thing. TV episodes are good, except in this case, it felt very boring. I, I can't even believe I'm saying that. I don't know how you can make this setup boring, but they did, uh, especially in the fact, uh, which we'll get to this in the gameplay a little bit more, but the game just drags. And I had a lot of problems where it would just replay cutscenes all the time. So I would literally see the same cutscene over and over and over again. And if I saw a new one, I was like, oh my gosh, great, I get to see a new cutscene. And so that's that's really, that's not cool. I, that, that does not help flow the story, in my opinion. It, it actually hurts it. So at that point, I wasn't very impressed with uh, Mut Mutants in Manhattan's story. Uh, moving on to the visuals... Again, I'm not really all that impressed. Um, I, I get that they were trying to go for a more comic book style, um, but there are a couple of problems that I had that a lot of people, aside from me, did too. One of which is the turtles. <coughs> um, you will see a lot of this in the game that they try to emphasize that this is almost like it's straight out of a comic book, and so they'll have emphasis on uh, like some of the lines that are being drawn on a comic character. And I would actually say that some people didn't have a problem with this. I did, uh, mainly because it made the game feel dirty to me. It felt like, I mean, I, I get that that's cool and you wanted to give it a comic book feel, but it felt more like along the lines of when, when a comic is being drawn and they have all these concept art lines and things like that and they're waiting for things to get erased, it feels like they, they got to the erasing part and then forgot to erase the dust, and so it just feels dirty overall, visually. Uh, New York City feels dirty, and that may have been what they were going for. The turtles feel dirty. Uh, the only time when I will compliment the style is actually with the bosses, but the bosses are supposed to look dirty. So, I, I mean, like, Bebop, Rocksteady, uh, Baxter wasn't featured in it, but Wingnut, Armagon, they all looked really, really good. But then you would get to some of the human villains like Karai and the Shredder, and they look just about as dirty as the turtles. So that's that's really very disappointing as far as I'm concerned. The art style just wasn't doing it for me in this particular game, and I did have to take points off. Same thing with the story. I had to take points off of it in my review. Moving into the gameplay, this is where I took um, 
less points, but I still took points away. So the way that the gameplay works in this game is that it's uh, a beat 'em up, kind of like Devil May Cry, kind of like Bayonetta. Uh, in this case, though, you you have a meter right above you that is leading up to the boss where you can unlock him. And so at that point, you're just going around a set area, taking care of Foot Clan members or mutants or or whatever in order to unlock the boss. Now, that doesn't sound necessarily like a bad thing. It is because it's very slow. It's very repetitive. Um, the the enemies aren't necessarily new or unique. Uh, when you come across them, you pretty much... Like, if you come across a new Foot Clan member, you're kind of happy about it. But then at the same time, you get to see those Foot Clan members uh, as featured, like, in six other levels. So it's, there's not really anything unique to them. And they also look very similar to other Foot Clan members that you come across. Uh, you're pretty much doing the exact same thing over and over and over, rinse, lather, repeat, to be able to get to a boss. And by then, you're begging for the level to be over. <laughs> there were only a few times where I actually wanted the level to keep going. And no, that, that was kind of the problem. Like I was muscling my way through levels and I just don't want to play it that way. Now, another thing that I should also mention that people did... Uh, also mentioned in their reviews is you aren't necessarily playing as just one turtle. And I also think this hurts it because you're playing as all four turtles and the other three are being played by AI. And it doesn't matter who you play as the AI tends to be a little dingy. It tends to be a little ditzy. And I could have told you like right off the bat, don't go with AI players. It, it never worked. Like don't go with AI turtles because they will always get you in trouble. And that's what happens here. 80% of the time when you're trying to move on to the next story objective, they're off fighting in some other random quarter of the city and they will not stop their AI stuff. Even though you have control over the AI, sometimes they may not even stop until April says, oh no, your turtle is doing something important. You need to get to him. I literally had moments where I was trying to kill a boss or I was trying to kill a major guy so that I can unlock the boss and they were just off jumping in some random building. And the only way that I got them to stop doing that was when April said, oh yeah, look, uh, whatever turtle I'm playing at that time it has found the boss. You need to get there. And then they would come to me. Uh, the other thing that I also want to mention is that they had special abilities for each turtle. And, and that actually, I would say is pretty cool. Being able to, to unlock these special abilities, because in some cases they were buffs for the other ones. So like if you were in the middle of a boss, you could actually slow down time for the boss and everybody could just unleash on him. Um, you could also do team up moves to do even more damage to groups or to a boss. That's cool. And I have no problem with that. In fact, one of my favorite ones was uh, Michelangelo likes to make everybody dance. And at that point, if you have them doing that, there is a stealth kill mechanic to this game and you get instant stealth kill when they're dancing. That's pretty cool. But that's pretty much the only factor of the gameplay that I didn't have issues with. Like, I like the special abilities. I didn't like the fact that I had to have all three other turtles in there. And I especially didn't like the levels as they dragged on. I really just looked forward to the bosses and that was pretty much it. And that's sad to say for a Platinum game. Uh, moving on into the audio, nothing surprising. It, it's got tracks that I think were inspired by Ninja Turtles, but were very generalized, were very techno and and un, unmemorable, really. They, they weren't memorable at all. And the voiceover work was equally as unmemorable, and I don't ever want to say that about voice actors, but in this case, it there was no performance in the game that stood out. There was no performance that made me go, oh, crap, that's awesome. All of it was pretty much just phoning it in, earning a paycheck, and therefore I, I don't want to really mention any actors or anything like that because I'm I'm sure they're better than that. Um, and the audio did get points down for that just because there was nothing standing out for it. There was no music that was awesome that I wanted to be able to have the track on, the, on my iPod or anything like that. And the voiceover work just wasn't there as far as I'm concerned. And this is where I'm actually going to pair up replay value and presentation because, again, we added suffer. Uh, replay value, uh, from what I could actually tell when I played through this game, I beat it. And the replay value pretty much just looked like you can play through the exact same levels you've done before, but on a harder difficulty. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not going to go through that. Or, or if you want an achievement. No, thank you. 
Uh, and, and even for Turtles fans, I can't even recommend this on replay value because basically what you want to do as a Turtles fan, get through the story, go, okay, I've seen the resolution. I'm going to move on with my life. And that's all you want to do with it. Um, so there's the replay value there. Or, or you can go earn points to go get uh, some of the items and uh, modif modifications that you can get for the Turtles, like abilities. Uh, but again, not worth it, in my opinion. And presentation, does it all come together? Obviously not. Uh, there, are, there are problems I had with every single aspect of this game, and the presentation just shows me shows me that this had a lot of problems. I have since heard that there were there were some issues that, uh, oh, I can't even remember who does the the turtle movies right now, but they wanted this out by the time Out of the Shadows hit, and so this is more of a movie tie-in game than I think Platinum wanted. And if that's the case, it makes sense because this game really feels like it was put to a deadline and, and just pushed through as quick as possible. And that's disappointing because if there was ever a property that Platinum should have gotten their hands on, it would have been the Turtles. If any, because I mean, they've, they've done Devil May Cry, they've done Bayonetta, they've done Transformers Devastation, they've earned um, the right to be able to make a decent Ninja Turtles game that we can all talk about. And it just feels like Corporate politics basically made this a train wreck. And so that's really sad to say. And I'm going to go ahead and give it my final score of a 6 out of 10. It's it's average. It's not standout by any... Like, it's slightly above average, I guess. But it's nothing to write home about. It, it, it doesn't even feel... It feels more movie tie-in than actual original property. Which, again, does not speak well for Platinum. So, yeah, 6 out of 10... And that's going to go ahead and do it for this review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Mutants in Manhattan. Uh, can I recommend it to anybody? Even Ninja Turtles fans, I don't know if I could recommend this game. I, I've, and honestly, I would probably just recommend them to another Turtles game. I think that would be the better way to do it. Uh, so that's going to go ahead and do it for my review of this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, liking, commenting. Even if you didn't like the video, I'd love to see you guys' comments. Maybe you liked it. Maybe you thought I was being too harsh. I'd love to hear your feedback on it as well. And while you're here, like I said, give a comment, give a like, subscribe to my, uh, subscribe to my channel, and check out all the other content that I do because I've got so much else going on aside from reviews. I do first impressions. In fact, yesterday, or in fact, on Wednesday, you guys can see my uh, first impressions vlog on Metroid Prime Federation Force. And that's just simply because I don't have a souped up 3DS, so I can't get footage. And I don't really like the idea of taking footage from another channel to be able to do that for you. Um, or you can check out my current Drac plays that is going on of Heroes of the Storm, where I'm trying to get good at the game, as well as being able to showcase a lot of the heroes. Because I'm not usually a big MOBA fan, but I really do like Heroes of the Storm, and I want to be able to get good at it. And plenty of other content that you guys can check out. And in the meantime, I'm Drac, and I will see you guys for the next review.